reading students of the force, acolytes of a galaxy far, far away, and dangerous mercenaries of the Star Wars galaxy, and welcome back to our archives. I have been expecting you. If you are not aware, recently, in fact, just last night, on September 21st, 2022, the Andor TV show released with a three-episode premiere. I have ensured you that I'm going to be giving you my predictions, my analyzations of each three episodes in their own separate videos, or maybe even combined together. I personally am very hyped for the next episode of Andor to release next Wednesday. And personally believe it is one of the best live action TV shows, even after only seeing two episodes. Well, today, weary acolytes of this galaxy far, far away, I'm going to be giving you my breakdown, full analysis, and observations regarding the Andor episodes. With that out of the way, acolytes, let's begin and voyage into the life of Cassian Andor. Before we begin, I would just like to remind you and import into your knowledge that you have not yet subscribed if you have not stricken down the subscribe button. If you wish to ascend to the rank of master, you will strike down the subscribe button. It is your destiny. With that little distraction out of the way, acolytes, let's begin. Starting off in the episode, we see Cassie and Andor wandering along a strange planet. He walks up into a bar where he was approached by a female woman. This woman I immediately compared to the slave woman that dances in Jabba's palace, believing they have the same species and are possibly even the same person. However, this is up to highly contested debate. Following this, Cassie and Andor is approached by this woman and two guards who are revealed to be the sentry guards of this area get jealous and infuriated with his luck of her and getting her because he, they had been there longer and he had only just arrived. Upon asking about a girl from Canari, wondering if they had seen her, she replies, the woman states to Andor that the girl left many months prior. Cassian then admits that it's his sister. Upon inquiry that it might be his girlfriend or his wife, she then leaves, stating in a final disrespect, that nobody gives their real names at the bar and that they only use fake IDs. Following this, Cassie and Andor ventures out of the bar and into and out of the district that he was a part of. Following this, Cassie and Andor is approached by the two same guards, most likely drunk, hops up and then are approached by them. They are immensely violent and brutal towards Cassie and Andor. He states that he has 300 credits, but upon the realization that one of them has a blaster pointed directly to his skull, he states that he has 300 credits in his coat pocket when one tries to get it out. He states that it is in the other pocket when he goes to the other pocket. He knocks him unconscious by slashing him in the back of the head, then using his fast reflexes and attentive mind to grab the blaster before it can shoot a crimson bolt at his chest. He redirects the blaster and takes it back, pushing the mercenary to the ground and the guard to his knees and making him at the mercy of Cassie and Andor, a much more brutal fighter than we would later see in the events of Rogue One. He then walks over limply to his friend, who is revealed to have been killed by hitting his head on the fall, already been weakened and under fatigue from Cassie and Andor's headbutt. He is killed by slamming his head on the metal to severe injury. He cannot feel his pulse. And so further pleas that they'll bring him in together and say that Cassie and Andor did not kill him. And it was just the four that hurt and killed his close friend. Cassie and Andor merely responds by shooting him in the head. This, for me specifically, is a very instrumental and odd part of it in the entirety of Star Wars lore, as this shows Cassie and Andor's eventual descent into a rebel hero, as it shows he is much more brutal and violent than he would later be in his rebel tenure. Following this scene, we see Cassie and Andor's droid, that he named D, travelling across a stricken junk world, a junk world that Cassie and Andor most likely uses to pay for credits. He travels to Cassie and Andor's hut. Cassie is sleeping and dreaming about his former life on Canari with his sister. 
he dreams that there is an imperial cruiser sailing above the imperial cruiser is then shot down and decimated by a blast of fire fire licking to the edge of the sky from the imperial cruiser cassian and his sister then observe the situation one of their own who is unnamed as of this time lay then you held a stress signal to them telling them to come over when one of the elders tells her to immediately shush not unaware if they are friend or foe not believing that they are benevolent peacekeeping souls and that they want to kill and absolutely decimate them following this cassie and andor asks and inquires whether somebody has been to his hut last night d replies saying that someone known as Bracus and someone other being had it went to his hut cassie and andor then leaves inquiring and beckoning to d to create a lie saying that he never saw him d then complains then if he can go with cassian but cassian says he can't due to the fact that they'll draw too much attention and he needs d's lie to stay stable following this we see a variety of different soldiers come and take their gloves most likely for the work day to haul in scrap for their employers or for them to get credit and supply their nations and the food supply. We see Cassie and Andor call out to one who is an unusually big man and bulky in build and structure. He talks to him and beckons him to make up an excuse. However, he refuses, making up his own excuse that still complies with the wishes of Cassie and Andor. Following this, the scene dramatically shifts into an imperial holding cell or what it appears to be an imperial base we see a deputy inspector of the inspector corps talking to his lieutenant and most likely superior the superior states and the inspector also states that they are leave he is leaving later today for an imperial mission and they then proceed to discuss and converse about the death of two officers and moc employees who have died unknowingly to them by the hands of cassie and andor the deputy who is very concerned about this and wants to track it down is infuriated and enraged when his superior officer states that all they need to do is make up an excuse as a lot of things were occurring at that present time that were not meant to be occurring and could have provoked a bad image about their institution this greatly angers the deputy who upon blatantly and unknowingly agreeing to sustain and create a false future in which they actually die and perish by the hands and blaster of Cassie and Andor. Upon his departure, the deputy immediately gets to work by disobeying his superior officer, marching around directing orders and insulting officers where they do not deliver their highest work. We then see Cassie and Andor going into a junk shop, seeing a woman called Biss. Biss is a scrapper and most likely makes the majority of her credits, if not all of her credits, through junk wares, searching and scouring the planet for new junk items that she can steal. Cassie Nandor says that he has a very rare piece of Imperial technology with the data card still intact and desires to meet the person and employer that she has been getting her credits off and buying her supplies. This greatly enrages her and Biss due to the fact that that she was aware that they shared all their secrets but Cassie and Andor upon observation she reveals that he had been holding an act for herself she he then acknowledges that a man called Tim has engaged in a physical and intimate relationship with her he then congratulates him saying that he will never have more of a headstrong woman than this then we see another flashback in Cassie and Andor's life on Canary where he and his sister are preparing for war with a variety of weapons they ignite the Christian and cultural ways and the ancient violent customs that the Canari practice. He scrapes a line of grey powder and liquid across his chin going down his neck to signify a warrior. However, a teen member of this group blatantly replies, stating that he should not do this as he is not of age, but one of the elders corrects him, stating that Cassian is of age and he then proceeds to leave him alone however we can tell that cassian is holding a grudge upon this we then see two beings that would later come to be known as 
as what appears to be two smugglers, Urchie and Verge. They demand Cassian give them their money. More blatantly, Urchie does, as Vetch was just required and paid to stand there and look imposing, forcing Cassian into giving them their money. However, Cassian, using his quick wits and charming attire and nature, weasels his way out of giving them the money at the moment, making up an excuse or possibly stating a fact about the race that they bet on, with Urchie responding saying he would not be one of the losers. The would run and not get their credits back after Cassian forgets how much he owes them, which is a considerable amount based on his reaction. We then see Biss occasionally running errands. This running errands is actually a ploy for her partner not to discover out about her fi- secret lie, her secret life being a scrapper, and the idea that she has to make the majority of her credits illegally and selling scrap to the empire and not working like she normally would however he follows her but is unable to pick up her trail after a certain period of time we then see cassian and another being conversing in what appears to be a junkyard this junkyard and junkyard salesman it appears gets a radar dish and comlink due to the fact that he is not on sale and there are customers and there are customers that need his direct attention. He demands that Cassian leaves and that Cassian never comes back after he's finished with his work, demanding that after he's finished with the Imperial dish and data card he swapped out, well, supposedly swapped out, that he would leave and never come back and trouble them again. The last thing we see of the Andor show is Cassian Andor's last flashback where he goes off to battle with the other soldiers, with his sister looking on dreamily, hoping and praying that her brother makes it back safely. Well, my friends, that was a complete breakdown of Andor Episode 1, uncovering and unveiling more holocrons, revolving around the other two episodes, and we'll be sure to upload more Andor content soon. I hope you're excited for Andor as much as I am, but with this knowledge now forsaken and embedded into your minds, I bid you farewell. I now traverse the galaxy as a lone mercenary, a Sith Lord, a Jedi, and a God. Goodbye, acolytes, and I hope that you are not on the receiving end of my lightsaber blade today.